Hi, I'm Jill Roberts, and we're here with Making Artists and Stories, and today I am here with... Uh, Peter Janopoulos. And Anna Janopoulos. And your business is... Uh, Papa Spiro's Olive Oil. Which is where I wanted to start. Papa Spiro's refers to your... Is it your great-grandfather? Uh, my grandfather. So tell me how... Because you're three generations... So I'll tell you... If, Four generations. Four generations. Yeah, with my kids being five generations oh. now. <laughs> so tell me how, the, it's a neat story of how you came up with the name and how you got into the whole olive oil thing. So basically my grandfather was, loved his uh, olive trees in Greece. He would go down there every year and he would pick it, press it, and he would send the olive oil to us so we could eat as a family. But there was always so much extra olive oil every year that, and olive oil is not like wine that uh, it uh, doesn't age well. Okay. So at the end of the time, we would just get rid of it, or we, we, we eat like two, three year old olive oil, which is not very good. So that gave me the whole idea of selling the Papa Spiro's extra virgin olive oil too, for everybody to try and sharing our experience with everybody. So you said you started as a hobby? As a hobby, about six years ago. Okay. I was kind of bored at the restaurant. I, uh, at the time, I was working at Brushmo by the Waterfall, I had owned it. And during the mornings, I started just researching how to bottle and everything and all the cleaning uh, to go through the bottles and everything. And I decided to just start bottling it and just sell it out of the restaurants. Uh, we also own Nick's Place in Madison. The customers were crazy about it. They loved it. And from there, I was able to get a little money. Uh, like I said, uh, all the money that I made, I put right into the business. And it just kept growing. And then I was introduced to farmer's markets. So I decided uh, to try one. It was, the first one we were, it was Lime, Farmer's Market. Okay. And we went over there and we killed it. It was uh, amazing. People loved it. Good reviews. From there, we started uh, branching out. We started making uh, cosmetics a little bit, uh, uh, body moisturizer. That's when Anna started uh, giving me ideas, too, to expand the business uh, because you branched out, you're more than just olive oil. So we also have uh, Cretian sea salt and wild mountain oregano. We have uh, other products as uh, cosmetics, uh, body scrub, and we make with uh, two our, of our ingredients. Uh, one is our olive oil and the other one is sea salt from uh, the cliffs. So my brother lives in one of the biggest islands in Greece called Crete, and he goes by himself. He can pick the sea salt right from the cliffs, and wow. then he send it over to me. So it's a hundred percent pure, natural uh, sea salt. Wow! With all the minerals. Basically, my brother-in-law goes up and on the mountains and picks wild oregano. It's, and it's like the craziest, awesome flavor that. It's not your regular oregano that you grow at your house or something. but That's fantastic. And uh, the sea salt, he actually he'll take a little dinghy and go on the side of the cliffs, and. So basically, there's no tides in Greece like we have over here in the Sound. So basically, their tide is come springtime, the water drops and just leaves pools of water. They dry up with the sun and become sea salt. So you open your, you got yeah, your, sure. you got your flakiness of the. Oh, look at that! And, Exciting. Uh, so it's so just, crystally. He, he sends it to me, it and uh, we package it. So you're really bringing your heritage of Greece back here. Basically, to, I mean. To... The way we would eat in Greece or yeah. at our house, that's what we want everybody to experience. Are there any other herbs that you that you offer besides the oregano? We do savory. He goes he can pick up the savory also and the thyme. But he, he brought us a small amount of them. Yeah, depending so. on the season. Uh, so this year, oregano was good. The thyme and the savory was uh, it didn't get that much. Oh, and I imagine that using all these ingredients, your, the products that you make using the, the salt and the oregano, they have to have such a unique flavor. Yeah. So a lot of people ask me, what, why is this so good? Oh, right. And I go, the secret is the olive oil or the salt that we use. Right. Excellent. Excellent. The olives, that was interesting about your story. You're, you're, you actually will harvest annually. The yes, so green. olive season harvest is between November and January. We actually pick our olives green. You get more nutrients and a better quality olive oil. You get less olive oil, but it's a better olive oil. Okay. We're going for the quality, not the quality. Okay. Uh, a lot of the farmers wait until January. Think of like a ripe fruit. It gets juicier, so they'll make more money off the weight. Right. Uh, not as good, though. The, you lose the health uh, benefits and everything when you wait longer.
Okay. In November, we go down there, we pick it. My father is usually the one that goes down and he organizes it. He hires his, uh, my uncles and cousins and they help out. And I saw on the website, you lay the stuff under the tree, right, to kind of catch the yeah. out, right? So basically, you take a tree and uh, there's a few methods that we do. Uh, there's this machine that basically knocks the olives off the branches. Okay. Uh, then the other method is somebody goes in the tree. We, so we basically prune the trees as well at the same yes, time. Yep. So they'll cut the branches that off, and there's a machine that we put it through, and we pull it out, and it separates the leaves and the olives. And that's another way of filling up the sacks. So basically the point is we fill up the sacks. At the end of the day, we bring it to the village uh, press, Okay. And we tell them we're bringing our olives today. We bring it there, and they start pressing it. So at this point, they drop it through the machine. They wash all the olives. Okay. And then it goes to the the press. So it's basically, it starts pressing for an hour. And the key word is cold press. So it needs to be at no point, because you're using machines now. It's okay. not your old school <laughs> stone and donkey so- walking around. <laughs> but uh, there's all temperature gaze in there. So if it gets too hot, it's the press slows down, so they at no point it should be over a certain temperature. Okay. Because then you you ruin uh, the the olive oil. Okay. Uh, from there it goes through this other machine that separates basically the water and the oil. So uh, and you can see the water separating one side and the oil separating on the other side. Right. And then they go into filling up with containers that we send over here. So it's it's all bottled in Greece and then sent back then here. Then sent back over here, yep. Okay. So basically when we get sentenced over here, we go pick it up from uh, New York, and then we bring it to our house. And then from the olive oil, we also make the food products over here. Yeah, show uh, me yeah, show me what you have here. So we are, over here we got uh, red pepper hummus, which we roast the, the, the peppers ourselves. Okay. Roasted beet hummus, which that's our newest product that... I love the color of it and, and everything. It's great, yes. But same concept, we, we roast our own beets, and from there we use the chickpeas and make the uh, hummus. Okay. Our basic uh, classic hummus. The next one is, you can pronounce the name on the... Uh, Melizano Salata with a Greek pronunciation. <laughs> with a Greek pronunciation. <laughs> so it's basically, it's uh, almost like baba ganoush, so it's eggplant. Uh, okay. So baba ganoush is a little more smoother. Okay. Where that is a little more chunkier. So you could, you could eat it as a dip, or you could put it on a steak. Uh, it goes very well. Uh, and then the last one would be baklava. Yep. Uh, the neat thing about that, instead of butter, which is traditional to use butter, yes. we spray the, each sheet with olive oil. So technically a little healthier than uh, using it, butter, but you still get that amazing crisp in the color. on. Uh, oh, yeah. And also in baklava, I use the thyme honey which, uh, from Crete okay. in the syrup. So it gives extra taste. Because remind the tell me how the baklava again. What's the the lay? It's a lot of layers, right? With the with pastry. What else is in it? Uh, it's Be- a walnuts. Okay. And then it's a cinnamon. We use some spices for aroma. And in the end, after we bake it, we put it syrup, uh, sugar syrup on top with a thyme honey in it. And, and then, then tell me what this is. So that is a spanakopita, spinach pie stuffed with spinach and feta. Okay. But the cool thing about that is that Anna makes the phyllo dough from scratch. I hand roll the phyllo dough, and uh, then I fill it with uh, spinach and feta and some of the leeks, onions. I sell in frozen. Right, and then they and then your customer would bake it. And they bake correct? it off. But a very okay. old tradition that nobody does anymore. Right. I mean, even in Greece, it's very hard to find somebody that hand rolls phyllo dough. And how did you learn? How that was? I learned from my ma- mother, okay. but it needs a lot of skill and practice to get right. Right. Yeah. yeah. As a chef, I, I can do it. You can, <laughs> yeah. Do you enjoy? I don't, it? I don't have the patience oh, yeah, for it. Yeah, I enjoy it. I love it. I make with them my love. But would you serve this as an appetizer? Would you serve it as a as, as a, a main, dinner? As a dinner? As a lunch? Yeah. Okay. Or appetizer as well. Do you serve this room temperature, or would you serve it warm? It's like I typically. Like so. I like it very So it's like, oh, you can it's eat different it anyway. hot. You can take it out of the refrigerator. And it's a and different it. room temperature than it's different okay. when it's cold. Tzatziki, it's a Greek yogurt with a cucumber and dill inside. And you, usually you eat on the gyro meat. Have okay. you, do you know gyro? We call, we say gyro in Greece. Okay. But here you can saw, you can hear it as a gyro or some people they know as like the Greek word gyro. Okay. 
So that would be used as like a dip? You can use it as a dip or you can use it as a dressing in the salads. It's many ways. Like it's like goes with every kind of meat. So you brought with you today this really fantastic looking charcuterie board. Did I say that correct? Okay. <laughs> Do you give tips to people when they come and buy your products? Do you offer them how they could use them or do you find that a lot of people are asking? Well, a lot of people do ask. What they serve. What they could do, serve. and that's definitely a option. And a lot of people do during the holidays. We're buying the dips to make uh, charcuterie boards. And you have a great website, Papaspiros. Olive oil. Olive oil. Com. Com. You mentioned before the benefits, the health benefits of olive oil. Elaborate on that a bit more. Uh, I think here's my nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> so the benefits of olive oil is uh, antioxidants. Uh, it's also anti-inflammatory, um, helps to reduce the cholesterol of your, of your blood and has um, vitamin E, it's good for the skin, and also has calcium too. Okay. And being a pure, real extra virgin olive oil, you get those benefits where your store-bought, a lot of them are fake olive oil and they mix other stuff in the olive oil so you don't know what you're buying yeah tell me the difference because i know the cold the first you mentioned the cold press how is that different because is not all olive oil cold press olive oil is not regulated in the united states we don't uh bled with any other oils our olive oil comes right from our trees olive trees to the bottle and the good thing is we let the trees grow by themselves so it's organic olive oil. We don't spray our olive trees. Yeah, we're, with we're any actually in the, the process chemicals. of getting the organic label, but it takes okay. five years to uh, show proof of what we use, the organic fertilizers and stuff. Okay. Thank you for bringing a little of your heritage to Wallingford. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.